Hey TV fans, welcome to Tori Talks TV. I'm Tori. And I'm Dr. S. In this video, we'll be discussing the new Apple TV Plus show called The Shrink Next Door, episodes one through three, because they gifted us three at once. Mm -hmm. And this was very intriguing to me. It's a very interesting show. It's one of those shows where I don't know the genre. Yeah. I don't know the tone. Mm -hmm. I know the genre, I guess. Yeah. It's like a no genre genre. Right. It's kind of loosely based on... Uh, it's based on these people. Like, they, right? this is their real names. So, Oh. Yeah. Well, it says in the disclaimer, so I thought maybe it's like a... No. Yeah, I thought so, so too. So it's saying it's based on true events and a lot of it's been dramatized, but if it really does fall in line with what really happens, it wasn't intended. <laughs> That's basically what the disclaimer <laughs> said. But no, this is a real person. This is a real doctor, and this is really his patient that he took advantage of for 30 years. So sign me up. <laughs> so yes, let's talk about episode one first, because it starts out with a beekeeper outfit, and I'm so confused at this point, but I'm like, tell me more, because... Okay, uh, this is my favorite <laughs> technique or strategy of hooking a viewer in. Confuse the crap out of me, and I'm in. Yeah. What is this? Obscure. Yes. Yeah. I love it. Why is there a beekeeper? What, they, we, we never revisit it in these three yeah. episodes, so more of that later. Yes. Then they go to 2010. Yes. And there's a party in the Hamptons, and here's this doctor who's just, like, loving life, talking to everybody. This is where we see the celebrity hound in him mm -hmm. first show up with Lisa Renna. And then you see this man who he's ordering around to take a picture. He seems disgruntled, mm -hmm. and um, he says something about the towels, and he's just, like, ordering him around. I'm like, okay, I get it. I get where this is going. Yeah. Later on, he's smashing things from the party and then we go back to 1982 to see where this shenanigans all started pause real quick why in 2010 did it look like the 1980s though? it did it did what? i agree i was so confused just time wise yeah when, when am i right but okay it's a little bit yes but then we actually do go to the 80s then we really do go to 1982 to see where this began okay we meet phyllis who's played by the remarkable Catherine Hahn. I'm obsessed I with love her. her so much. I can't not look at her. Every single scene, she steals. She's perfect. She's yes. perfect. She's yeah. just so compelling. Her character, I just want, can we just follow her? Yeah, I know. She's so good. Let's see it from the point of view of Phyllis, yes. who's obviously the sister of, oh, I feel bad, uh, Marty, who's played by the always hilarious, but kind of like sad here, yeah, uh, Will Ferrell. Yes. And of course, the doctor's played by, um, hello, 2021 sexiest man alive per <laughs> People magazine, Paul Rudd. Who but I'm going to say he doesn't look it in this <laughs> No, show. this is bad timing. <laughs> bad timing, okay? <laughs> Nothing sexy about this guy here. But anyway, so Phyllis is the sister and she's worried about him. And you can tell there's this protectiveness that mm -hmm. she is showing, right, yes. for her brother. And then there's Deborah, who's his ex, who only worries about herself in Mexico. And they uh, he owns a fabric company that we, we learned that he got from his parents because his parents both passed away. And we see this customer who's upset about the fabric and then he goes into this panic attack and I think he kind of faints. That was funny. Him, she's like, really, are you doing this now? Like no remorse, just kind of like, pull yourself together. But she comes to the rescue is what we're yes. seeing. Mm -hmm. There's definitely- and there's a history of her doing this for him. So yes. we think, oh, she's a great sister. That's what we think. That's what we think right now. So she encourages him to go see a doctor yes. about this. And that's where we see Dr. Ike and, uh, <laughs> And Marty's definitely like, I'm good. I'm good. I have nothing to say. I have nothing to share. Mm -hmm. I'm fine. fine. And then Dr. Drake's like, let's take a walk. They, he, we find out that Marty's uncle is suing him. He, he's going through a lot. So it's understandable yes. that he's having these little breakdowns. They play basketball and there's this line and I'm not, I'm paraphrasing it because I don't remember exactly how he said it. But um, basically, Dr. Ike says, I just asked for the ball. You chose to throw it. To me. Do you remember that? Yes. Because then I was like, things are, are sinking in for me here, uh, which I already knew about. Mm -hmm. But then we're, also they're like revealing the insecurities yes. of Marty. Yes. And then um, then the doctor says, hey, let's call your ex and, um, you know, talk about like, let's squash the whole Mexico thing. Yes. He has another panic attack. <sighs> it's it's also. OK, so do you already know this whole story? No. OK, me neither. OK. I don't know. I, I don't know see anything. Where it's going though. Okay. Yes. But I don't know. Is he even a real doctor? Oh. Is it all fake? Like, because 
I feel like he crossed the line from the very beginning. Yeah. First first um, session, right? You don't leave and go out. I thought <laughs> change the scenery. You're obviously, you know, timid about being here in front. So let's just go for a walk. I didn't even take it until I, the ball thing. Oh. That's when I started to go. <laughs> You're off. I mean, I had a little idea of like what was gonna happen, but I I don't know. I just seem I just seem like that's not okay. You're not supposed to leave with I your client, but I well, don't see, know. See, you for would sure. know because you you know are studying psychology. Well, de- with, with children, I definitely wouldn't take the children <laughs> out of the school. Definitely not but okay for children. I wouldn't think my my therapist would be like, let's go have like a sandwich. Yeah. Let's go play pickup basketball. <laughs> yeah, you see the persuasion happening with him, yeah. especially when he gets him to go to the ex, which the ex is awful. Yes. And he kind of acts as the lawyer because they don't deny that he's the lawyer. So <laughs> he, yeah, so Marty is starting to trust him, mm-hmm. which is awesome. But then um, then you see more red flag when he, when, uh, he takes Marty to that framing place. Yes. <laughs> and then he says um, he doesn't have his wallet. Oh, my God. Weird. Yes. That was totally planned, Crazy. right? So then Marty, being as sweet as he can be, he offers to pay for the session ahead of time. Yes. And then he can pay for the frame. But then, like, they're going to go over in time, so he has to pay for more time. Yeah. He, right? He's so it's bad it's, news. It's borderline. <coughs> because, okay, maybe you would pay for the two sessions if you go over. But but you would have to have an arrangement. Wouldn't you just pay cash? Maybe a receipt? You just pay cash for a I mean, I know this was the <laughs> 80s, but I'm pretty sure there was health insurance and oh, documents, yeah. paperwork. Right. You need to sign. Not like, formal fill, at all. Fill out some paperwork <clears throat> no. when you go to see a therapist. None of that. None of that. No. Yeah. I do love that this episode ended with um, Marty dragging one of those cows across the yard to bury it because he had showed, Dr. Ike had showed interest in one yes. of those cows. I'm going to buy one of those one day. Yes. Uh-huh. Um, so then we go to episode two. This starts in 1956 at Marty's bar mitzvah. He's hiding in a bathroom stall and his sister comes to find him again, comes to rescue him. What a great sister. What, what a great sister. But wait, <laughs> let's go back to 1982 where sweet Marty is with his nibblings at a movie. Yeah. He has such a great relationship with them. Mm-hmm. It makes him more loving. Um, and then he has a session with Dr. Ike and he talks about the death of his dad. He says he misses him and he, it feels not good to quote him. And Marty cries and has what Dr. Ike describes as a breakthrough. Yes. Just totally being vulnerable and Ike is just, Dr. Ike is eating it up. Yes. he. But Dr. Ike does all the work. He says, this is what you're thinking. This is what you're feeling. He's not allowing Marty to come to it on right. his own. So right. that was also a red flag. You could me. see it, right? Yes. Interesting. And you had a breakthrough. Let's just fast forward. Yeah. You had a breakthrough. Let's speed this go. up. I already I'm know I can take great, advantage. I'm a great yeah. shrink. Yeah. Yeah. And then they're out of time and he invites him to go to lunch, but says he'll have to charge him for that time. <laughs> I just don't understand. Uh, this being a real character, Marty, I'm sorry to call you out, but how do you not... Like, maybe not the first time, mm-hmm. but how do you not after this, when he invites you to lunch and then says you have to pay for the time, he's just a really sweet, gullible guy. He is. And that's just fueling his... Um, that's terrible. Yes, his sickness. Um, so he shows his indecisiveness when he's trying to order. Yes. Yes, mm-hmm. which is so sad. I totally get it, though. It's a lot of pressure when you go up there and there's people waiting in line behind you, but I also have anxiety, so blah, blah, blah. <laughs> um, did you notice that Dr. Ike, when he's in bed with his wife, he rejects her? Mm-hmm. What did you think of that? Like, where did you go in your head when he wasn't interested in, uh, he had kimchi or something. And kimchi. He was, oh, he said, I didn't, didn't he say he had bad breath? Yes, so he says, like, oh, I think I have kimchi breath. I don't know, actually. I didn't really think, I felt bad for his wife because she was trying to make him feel better by, is, yeah. Is he interested in her? Is he, I don't know. Is he using her? Oh. I'm just trying to figure out why that was put in. It was a very short scene, but it seems like it's probably going to be important. Well, I don't know because I, yeah, I don't know. But I do think that he is controlling of her, yeah. right? Because he doesn't want her to do anything that she wants to do. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. All right. So Marty's feeling like a new sense of confidence. So he holds a meeting and announces these new ground rules, which is people are looking at him like, are you kidding me? There's never been rules like this before. Like, we just kind of been walking all over you. So why would we start now? Phyllis even walks in late and he's like, hello. And of course, she's not used to it. Right. So she just kind of. You can't come in hot like that. You need to ease into it. You don't have no rules and then all of a sudden 10 rules. Right. 
And then no. he throws his rules out the window because he gets a call from right. Dr. Ike and he's got to go meet with him. No, see, <clears throat> no, no credibility. Okay, this is where it takes a really weird turn. It was already weird. But the recommendation from Dr. Ike for uh, Marty to have a 40th birthday as a second bar mitzvah. Because <laughs> when he was in bed with his wife, he talked about his bar mitzvah and basically how disappointing it was, mm-hmm. right? So then I'm thinking, okay, he wants to have a second bar mitzvah for himself, but using the vessel of Marty to have oh. it be done, right? Did you think that? I didn't think that, but I can see that now that you mentioned That's it. That's just where I went with that. Because he had just talked about how he didn't like his bar mitzvah. There's, that whole thing was really weird. Yes. Yeah. Then there's the girl who has her own <laughs> bar mitzvah. Yeah. But yeah. Well, why together? Wouldn't you be really mad? They're just, yeah. That, this old guy. He at, said they were booked yeah. already, so they had to double book it or something, but... That's is that not, okay? I, no. I, I, I don't that know. That's very not okay to that me. That might be against the kind of creepy. Yeah, that is creepy because it's like totally, it's a four-year-old man. man. And a 13-year-old girl. <laughs> I know. Well, Phyllis doesn't think it's a good idea. And I'm like, go, Phyllis. Yeah. You're a good sister. Good mm-hmm. job for seeing the red flags. <laughs> she even goes to the rabbi and uh, the rabbi and he says, I don't know anything about this. So, um, yeah. Dr. Ike's whole explanation for this is that he is this man that's been held back his entire life by his bar mitzvah. Bar mitzvah. But yeah. I think he's talking about himself. Again. Now that makes sense. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. I get it. Yeah, because so, it was a lot to impose upon Marty. I don't think that Marty was saying that. No. No. I, exactly. He's planting all these oh. these thoughts in his head. But yeah. So he scolds Marty about the sister saying she doesn't know what's best for him. Marty has to go confront Phyllis. You see the cracks forming yes. in the Marty-Phyllis relationship. Yes. Mm-hmm. And then he tells her, don't come to my bar mitzvah. And uh, I really do believe that that bar mitzvah was actually for Dr. Ike, who was trying to paint him as this pathetic patient. Just go along with it, whatever. It's it's for him. But really, oh. he was... Because they lifted him up, too. That's true. Yeah, he got to be a part of the whole thing. What a weasel. Mm-hmm. Okay, then we go to episode three. And, um, again, Marty seems like he's feeling better. So, in some capacity, this is working, I guess. He's painting his office blue. Very pretty shade, in my opinion. Phyllis comes in to see him. She needs money for a better divorce attorney. And he comforts her. But I saw something there I didn't like in Phyllis. And just, like, like, I'm sorry. I said I'd never do this again. So, it must happen a Mm -hmm. lot having to take money from the trust. Yes. And then I said, "Uh uh-oh. What does this yeah, mean about Phyllis? I know, because it also came with the apology, right? Yeah. I'm here to apologize, but mm-hmm. I also need money. But then on the other hand, she's going through a divorce, and it's their money. It is her money, right? Right. Yeah. He's in charge. I saw that, too. It's their money. So then it's, I, I don't know. I'm not sure. It's I see both sides still, too. Yeah. And I just I just know in that moment when she said, I'm, I told you I never asked for it again, I said, uh-oh. Mm-hmm. So then some little bells and whistles were going off with her. Oh, my gosh. When Marty was talking talking to Dr. Ike, and Dr. Ike said he has, like, this alter ego or whatever. And then Marty was like, oh, yeah, I had an imaginary friend once, Norman Horowitz. He drew genitalia on my parents' curtains. (laughs) I like that Dr. Ike was like, we'll probably have to revisit that. I kind of want to revisit that. (laughs) That was so funny. Um, Then he says, Dr. Ike says, there's an unhealthy dynamic with Phyllis and Marty, Mm -hmm. which... Um, you see the divide getting bigger, but also there's an unhealthy dynamic with you, Dr. Yes. Ike and Marty. It's all also. around. Yeah, mm-hmm. it is. It is. So Dr. Ike is trying to be this hero. He gets Marty business for this Broadway show who needs fabric. It's Jesus Christ Superstar. Mm-hmm. I was in that play in high school. Ooh, Super I wrote fun. About that movie oh, version of that. Yes. That was a really fun play. Um, but then the Broadway guy was like, I don't want to be your guinea pig if you've never done a big job like this before. And I love that. The explanation was that he had a guinea pig, and they're actually really majestic creatures. <laughs> really? Because I think I've had one. I wouldn't say majestic. But they're very cute and cuddly. But anyway, it's this big job, and his employees don't think they can fulfill it. No. So he's trying to, like, get them on board. So he recruits Dr. Ike to yes. do it. The mindset of limited potential. I don't even know what that means. How do you break that down? That's what he wrote on the The mindset chalkboard. of unlimited potential. Unlimited potential. Unlimited. Oh, my God. I... <laughs> Now I see it. I saw limited for some reason, (laughs) and which wouldn't have surprised me if he wrote that. Um, Yeah. And then speaking of unlimited potential, his wife really wants to go back to school, and he basically laughs at her and says, oh, no, that costs money. So there you go. There you go. There's the emotional abuse right Mm -hmm. there. Right. Exactly. He's just abusive to everybody, and Marty is abused by everybody, basically. 
So Phyllis decides, I'm going to meet with this Dr. Egg, who is basically stopping her from doing yes. what she's always done mm -hmm. and um, repeating her patterns and tells him they have no boundaries. And he starts sweet talking her and kind of making her feel seen. Mm -hmm. And then she seems like she's in it. But then it clicks by yes. something he says. And she's like, this doesn't feel right. 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 So right. she's like, I'm on to you. Mm -hmm. But I'm kind of seeing a parallel with them. Yes. And how they treat Marty. They both do it. Yes. He allows them to do it also. Yes. 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 He doesn't know better, right? right. That's just what I, I think. But yeah, there's no one, there's nobody in his life to tell him, like, they're both taking advantage of you. And, and you know, it's easy to say that when you don't need anything in exchange. Right. But if she says it, well, she also needs money. If Dr. Ike says it, well, he also needs money. Yes. But if it's just like a third party, like, hey, this is what I see. I'm going to go now. I don't yeah. need anything from you. I'm just yes. telling you. Mm -hmm. He doesn't have anybody. Like That's that. what a therapist is supposed to be. Right, right. You'd think, right? So Dr. Ike is obviously so upset about this, and he tells Marty, I can't work with you anymore because of your sister, basically. She's getting in the way. Oh, my God. But ugh, Dr. Ike's smirk in the car when he picks up Marty with his wife to go to the mm -hmm. show. Paul Rudd. I was like, oh, <laughs> disgusting. <laughs> I could not stop laughing at the scene when they're watching. Okay, and, I'm so glad we're talking about this. Okay, because okay. they're trying to cut costs on the curtain, so fire retardant, just put it at just the top. The top. And then there's a candle. <laughs> and he's like, oh God, there's another candle. There are three candles on stage. That was the, my favorite scene of this whole show so far. If this show goes nowhere, <laughs> and if it just fizzles out, it was worth it for this scene. Yes. But, and, oh, there's another candle. There's a, we put the candles are low. We don't like drinking. Oh, now there's torches. It was borderline horror. Yeah. I, I was covering my face because I thought the whole thing was going to go through I, I thought so, too. I was laughing so hard because you know that Paul Rudd and Will Ferrell have the best comedic chemistry, obviously, anchor man. But yeah, just the <laughs> candles, the fire just kept happening. That whole, the whole time watching this, too, I just kept thinking, how much fun are they having? Oh, I just, know, right? Even that alone is enough for me to keep watching, too, because they're, they're, that's why every time, they probably have to start over so many times. Oh, yeah. Because of to keep from laughing. Yeah. Oh, I know. Just looking at each other in those clothes. <laughs> and their accents. Yeah. <laughs> oh, I loved that scene. That was the best comic relief yes. of all three of these episodes. <laughs> so, ah, oh, Marty is um, taking a picture, kind of, for um, Dr. Ike with, did you say Raul Julia? Yeah. Yeah, okay, I remember him from the Adams family. Yes, that's Marty. Yeah, yeah, so you can tell this is a thing with Marty, or Mar Dr. Ike wanting to take pictures with celebrities, which is also very gross. Yes. Yeah, so then Marty offers him a job at his uh, fabric company to be a consultant. I was like, no, no, Marty, no. Here's the boundaries again. Actually, there are no boundaries. No. Yes. Well, he's already going in and pretending to be a job that doesn't exist. Yeah, right. And with You're a right. fake name. So that's oh, totally, so that's definitely weird. unethical. For sure, yeah. So Phyllis, you know, uh, what does she do now that she feels like she's basically been kicked out of his life? She goes to his place and steals... Half a million dollars worth of jewelry from his safe and other things, I believe. That was crazy. So now, yes. If we weren't certain, now we know. She's bad news bears, too. Her he clothes are amazing, though. The 80s fashion. It's like 80s, but high fashion. Yeah, that's the true. oversized sweater. She can pull anything off. It's just Catherine not. Cool. She know. looks so cool. She looks so good. So why does... Okay, I get Marty calling Dr. Ike and telling him about it, like, help me. But then he's like, you need to go to the Hamptons house now, like, right now. I don't know why he was saying that, because maybe she's going to get some more, steal more, some more stuff. Thing. Yeah. And I'm going to go with you. And then there you go again. Like, you're, you're not allowed to do that. Yes. You can't go with no, Yeah. No. So In the middle at 2 a.m. Uh, yeah, exactly. And then they go there, and Dr. Ike is like a kid in a candy store. Oh and he's God. like, you, this is, you own this place? And that's obviously the same house we see in the beginning. Yes, that was... So, in that final shot of him lusting over all of that, I was so mad. I no. I that yeah. We know what's to happen next, and then he says, disgustingly, he says, "I'm gonna take care of everything, Marty. Like I'm gonna, I'm gonna take care of you." <laughs> oh my gosh! And that note that um, Phyllis left that says, "How's that for crossing boundaries?" Whoa, she's she's crazy. <laughs> she's crazy. <laughs> The, the, I honestly, I'm so sad that this is a true story and this actually happened for 30, 30 years. years. That's insane. And I don't know the story, but is he the only patient client that he did this to? Were That's they a good all question. 
I, I once it's over, because now I want to watch it untainted by reading about it. Yeah, yeah. But once it's over, I need to go back and read. I know. This is so sad. I know. I feel so bad. But I am really into the story, so I'm really looking forward. Will Ferrell is so good. He can do anything. He yes. can be hilarious. He can be so sad. You you can feel so sorry for him. Yes. He's he's just a very yes. versatile actor. Yes. And our sexiest man alive. Not oh. so sexy in this, but Oh my god, but still. But you can imagine. You can see through that to the sexiest man alive. Yeah. He's Ant-Man. Oh. Mm-hmm. I'll have to check that out. <laughs> he's definitely Josh from yes. Clueless. Oh yes. And Mike Hannigan from Friends. Of course. All those. Yes. Yeah. Anyway, sorry, I'll stop drooling over uh, Paul Rudd. Okay, let us know what you thought of these first three episodes of The Shrink Next Door. Please comment below and like and subscribe while you're there. We'd really appreciate it. Uh, Thank you so much for watching. See you next time. Bye-bye.